Well, good evening and welcome to our Monday Thursday service. Um, we are kind of switching gears just a little bit. Uh, we didn't want to, um, we were going to do a love feast and when we had talked a little bit more we figured that uh, this might be a better idea uh, to just kind of switch gears and go with more of a, a service type flow. Um, so this is what we got. So while Easter is every Sunday, the days of Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and Holy Saturday are like one great annual Sunday. Because of the pandemic, we cannot do these important services together uh, in church and as a community. While Easter is a joyful festival, we keep it now in a time of difficulty and almost worldwide sorrow. Still, we believe that Christ is with us in his word by a spirit drawing us together as one before God. We believe that the gospel of Christ gives us strength amidst distress and comfort in the face of our sufferings. These three services are really one event stretched over three days. And as a sign of unity, you might consider using these three days as a time of prayer that even though we're not going to a church building, you can designate your home with your family and your friends gathered together in whatever way that looks like for you. So we're gonna spend these next three days contemplating just what Sunday is going to mean for us in this time and in this moment. Monday Thursday is the Thursday before Easter, uh, believed to be the day when Jesus celebrated his final Passover with his disciples, uh, most notably that Passover meal was when Jesus washed the feet of, of his disciples in an extraordinary display of humility. He then commanded them to do the same with each other. Um, here, we, um, we have a, a simple bowl of, of water and a towel. Uh, Jesus reminds us by this, you will remember to love one another as I have loved you. You've heard it before. We've done a lot of washing lately, haven't we? <laughs> we have. But this thought tonight of washing is one of humility and love. As Jesus washed the disciples' feet, it showed more than dirty feet. It showed people who needed the Lord. And we do need the Lord. Let's pray. Holy God, you are the source of all love. Write Jesus' commandment to love others on our hearts and give us the will to love and serve others in Jesus' name. Amen. This is Psalm 116, verses 12 through 19. How can I repay the Lord for all his goodness to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. O Lord, truly I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your maidservant. You have freed me from my chains. I will sacrifice a thank you offering to you and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem, praise the Lord. Amen. The gospel reading that we have for tonight is taken from the 13th chapter of John, beginning with the first verse. It says, Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put into 
the heart of Judas, son of Simon of Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and, and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. And he, then he, he, came to, he came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus answered, you did not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. And Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. And Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. And Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher, you, you call me Lord. And you were right for what that is, because that is who I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done for you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent me. If you know these things, you are blessed. If you do them, I am not speaking of all of you. I know whom I have chosen, but it is to fulfill the scripture. The one who ate my bread has lifted his heel against me. I tell you this before it occurs, so that when it does occur, you may believe that I am he. Very truly, I tell you, whoever receives me, whom I send, receives me. And whoever receives me, receives him who sent me. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little long, longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. May God continue to bless the reading of the Holy Word. Thanks be to God. So the word mandi comes to us as an Anglo-French word derived from the Latin mandatum, which means commandment. It refers to when Jesus in the upper room during the Last Supper said to the disciples, a new commandment I give you, that you love one another as I have loved you that you also love one another. So in all lessons, we should call this not Monday Thursday, but Command Thursday. That doesn't mean we command others to do things, but it's a reminder that we are to serve and love one another with all of our quirks, flaws, imperfections, because we have been loved this way by God first. What I love about the Last Supper is that Jesus had the complete ability to make the night all about him, but he didn't. He knew he was going to die. 
And yet, instead of having the focus be on Jesus and Jesus alone, he put the focus on everybody else. As the most powerful person in the room, he shed his authority and he became like a servant and washed his disciples' feet. And the disciples, they don't understand what is happening, and and some of them are even stunned by Jesus' humility. And that got me thinking, have you ever been stunned by Jesus' humility? A better question is, do you think people are stunned by our humility? Or even our church's humility? But the disciples are stunned at what Jesus is doing, but he continues, and when he gets finished washing their feet, he says in John 13, verses 12 and 13, he says, Do you understand what I have done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and rightfully so, for that is what I am. And now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. So what does Jesus do for us? He sets what? He sets an example. And John uses a word here that goes even beyond what we might think of as an example. He uses the word hupadagma, which means a thing to be imitated. But Jesus says, look, that thing I just did that, that is to be set as an example for you is to be the original framework of what gets imitated and repeated over and over again. Jesus finished up by saying, and Rick has already said this, but we're going to say it again. He says, I tell you the truth. No servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. And now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. You see, sometimes we can get a pretty big head on us, can't we? Sometimes we can get this I am greater and better than attitude. And even though we might never verbalize it with actual words, we often can take on a God-like air. And Jesus reminds the disciples, he says, I am God, you are not. And when you realize and live into this fact in life, Jesus said, you will be blessed. He said, look, if I, your God and your master, am willing to shed my authority for the greater good and serve you are to do the same. You see, there are moments in life when I just want to forget something that I just read. And and to be honest, this is always one of those moments. I'm like, come on, Jesus. I like my power. I like my authority. I mean, can't, can't we just have it for just a teeny tiny little bit? I mean, why do I have to let it go? He says, because you follow me. And there's going to kind of come a moment in life when you're going to want to hold on to the authority that you have, whatever that authority looks like in your life, and never let it go. But because you too follow Jesus, because you call yourself a Christian, that moment will come when you have to make the decision to ignore Jesus and abuse the power and authority that you've been given or give it up and get your hands a little dirty and wash some feet show everybody else what it means to truly love to the fullest extent. You may be the chairman of a board for your company, but because people know you follow Jesus, you're put to another level and and category of influence and power. And the decisions you make in the heated moment of the boardroom have the ability to influence an entire room for good or bad. This moment when you realize you have all power and authority to make a decision, what are you going to do? Will you leverage it for yourself or will you leverage it for somebody else? Or maybe it's not the boardroom, but in a room with your two kids who are tired and cranky. How will they experience your authority and your power as their parent or grandparent or adult currently responsible for them? Will you crack and begin yelling and screaming, sending them both to their designated corners? Uh, Guilty as charged, especially within the last three weeks, right? Or will they see a compassionate, understanding adult who knows that they, yes, are very tired, confused, sad, alone, but you will hold them lovingly accountable for their actions because just being tired, just being sad, just being frustrated does not give you a free ticket to be crazy and destructive. You see, it's what we do in these moments of power that will shape our legacy as followers, as children of God and as a church. 
What we do in those moments will greatly affect and influence the future decisions of many. In this moment, who will people see? Will they see your desires and your wants, your personal agendas, your my way or the highway attitude? Or will they see a person who is faithfully following Jesus and choosing to live humbly and differently? You see, Jesus wanted the disciples to remember this night. He knew that in a very short time, these men would be rock stars, for lack of a better word, in Jerusalem. And he doesn't want them to lose sight of who they are and the position they hold. He doesn't want them to forget to serve others first. And he doesn't want them to forget to love to the fullest extent. And Jesus wants us to do the same. So the next time you find yourself in a position of power and authority, whether that's at work or in a committee meeting, at school with your friends and family, in the community or on the field or the court, wherever you may be at, what will your next move be when you realize that, wow, at this very moment in time, I am the most powerful person in the room. And I pray you remember this night that Jesus had with his disciples. I pray you recognize that in his moment of absolute authority and power, he gave it up. Not just for the disciples, but for you and for me. You see, this night was just a taste of his humility. Soon, he will show us an even greater example when he crawls upon a wooden cross that was meant for a criminal and give up his life and sacrifice and love for us. I pray in this moment in your life, the moment when it dawns on you that you have incredible influence, I pray you choose humility. I pray you choose to follow Jesus and leverage your power for the greater good. I pray you work with integrity, honor, and a sense of doing for others. And I pray you pause for a moment and take a breath and realize that this moment is not about you but about showing others the full extent of what it means to love and to truly follow Jesus. So go ahead. Chase after the humble example of Jesus Christ and stun the world by what you do, by how you live, how you lead, and the way in which you love. Let us pray. Blessed are you, holy God, for for the church. Gather all the baptized and all of those around your presence in the word. Strengthen the body of your people, even when we cannot assemble for worship like we are now. Grant grant our pastors, whoever they are, and even for us, Lord, and for church leaders, for faithfulness and for creativity and for ministry in this time accompany everyone who is continually preparing themselves to be led by you. Hear us, holy God. Blessed are you, bountiful God, for this good earth and for the flowering of springtime. Save dry lands from destructive droughts. Protect the waters from pollution. Allow in this time the planting of fields for food. Make us into caregivers of your plants and animals. Hear us, bountiful God. Blessed are you, almighty God, for our nation. Inspire all people to live in peace. Grant wisdom and courage to heads of state and to legislators as they face this coronavirus. Lead our elected officials to care for the needy. Hear us, almighty God. Blessed are you, faithful God, for you accompany suffering humanity with love. Be present wherever the coronavirus has struck. Visit all who mourn their dead Reassure all who have contracted the virus. Strengthen the quarantine or those stranded away from home. Sustain those who have lost their employment. Give courage to those who fear the present and the future. Support physicians, nurses, and home health aides. 
medical researchers in the World Health Organization. Hear us, faithful God. We offer another prayer as well. Blessed are you, gracious God, for you care for the needy. Feed the hungry, protect the refugee, embrace the distressed, house the homeless, nurse the sick, comfort the dying, and especially we pray for those we name before you now, all of the people who continue to need your love. Lord, all these people who continue to embrace and take the advantage of helping all the people who need to be out there helping all those people as they are sick. The doctors, the nurses, the grocery workers, the truck drivers, those people who are considered essential workers, those people who are taking themselves at risk so that all of us may be served. We thank you, Lord, for their risk, and we ask that you keep them well. Hear us, gracious God. Receive, merciful God, our prayers. For the sake of Jesus Christ, who died and rose, that we might live with you now and forever. Amen. And we conclude with these words. And these words make perfect sense, especially since they seem to be the same words that Jesus said. Put love above all else and let Christ's peace rule in your hearts. The three days continue. They continue tomorrow with the service of Good Friday. Let's continue during this time of Holy Week. Reflect what it is that our Lord Jesus has done for us. And let's also prepare ourselves for the surprise that he's going to offer us on Sunday morning. Go in peace.
See you tomorrow.